Hey guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Karen. I'm a single mom of a two-year-old with special needs. My son here, he has what's called a genesis of the corpus callosum and it's been rough. Um, in the beginning, I definitely had a hard time embracing motherhood due to his special needs. But within the past year, I feel like I've gotten stronger and with everything that I've been exposed to and had experience has definitely built up the confidence and essentially brought me here today. So I'm hoping that this video could potentially help someone that's in the situation that I am in or one that could relate and has a special needs child and just serve as encouragement to keep going. I know it could be frustrating uh, to be a special needs parent, but one thing you don't do is give up. So on that note, I'm going to get right into the tips. All right, so tip number one, have patience. I know it could be frustrating when your child is not doing everything that you expect them to be doing. And certainly, if they're not meeting a milestone, you should talk to their doctor. I know for my son, he's not walking, he's not talking, um, but he has a congenital disorder and he also has hypotonia. So he has low muscle tone, but we're working with him. And that's, yeah, he's, yeah, I, I know. Yeah, right. All right, so, all right, can mommy finish the video? All right, so, <laughs> have patience. Um, so on that note, it's just about being consistent, staying dedicated, and working with what they're giving you. Tip number two, trust yourself. You know your child, you're with them 24 seven. Yes, there are doctors, there are specialists that are experts in their field of practice, but you are an expert on your child. So if you feel that something is not right or you need a second opinion, go for it. Don't be afraid to fight for your child and their needs. All right, so tip number three. Do not compare. I'm guilty of this. I've done this so many times where I've compared my child to other children, um, my friends with kids, and even compared myself and my struggle as a special needs parent. That's something you don't want to do because you're going to constantly be looking and wondering like why my life is not like theirs or why my child is not like theirs. And to be honest, there are so many people out there who unfortunately are struggling as special needs parents and their children have disabilities that are naked to the eye. It's not just physical. So you don't know what somebody else is going through and your situation is unique. And that doesn't mean that you're better or you're worse. You know, just focus on you and your child. You know, again, this is your child. They're special and they're here for a reason. Tip number four, don't lose your identity. You are your own person at the end of the day also. And you need to tend to you, your own schedule, your aspirations, your goals that you set for yourself. Achieve them. Yes, we are parents. And naturally, we shift our, our focus to our children. But we cannot lose ourselves in the process. They need us. They need us to be our best selves. So tend to yourself and don't forget who you are at the end of the day. Yes, we are special needs parents, but that is a part of us, not solely us. All right, so tip number five, do not be afraid to ask for help. I used to be so guilty of this so so guilty i thought that i was the only one that could take care of my son and do everything then in the day i only burned myself out and i did it to myself and uh, nowadays when someone offers to watch my son or just give me a break i don't blink twice so when help is being offered to you take it as a special needs parent help is not offered all the time because nobody wants to take on what we do but when the person is willing to learn willing to be there for you and your child take advantage i know it could be scary especially when you have a child that's medically fragile like my son but you can <laughs> he's always shaking his head but you can educate the person i forgot what i was about to say i'm not trying to sound repetitive but again if the person is willing to help you out and they're saying hey i'll give you a break don't be mean don't say you could do everything unless you want to burn yourself out and you like the feeling of being exhausted, take the help. Number six, you're not perfect. None of us are. I'm not perfect. I have wallowed over my goof ups 
and times where I thought that my son had an appointment on a Tuesday and it was really a Monday and I beat myself up because it was so hard to get that appointment and I had to wait another three or four months to see the specialist. I was pissed. And just keep in mind, don't beat yourself up. Learn from your mistakes and move on. Number seven, it's okay to say no sometimes. That doesn't mean all the time. But when you need a break to yourself, if you're having a rough day or if your child is having a rough day, it's okay to say no. Some days I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to be in public. I don't want to go to a doctor's appointment. I don't want to talk to therapists. But at the end of the day, let me just put a full disclaimer there. If you are having a rough day and your child is not having a rough day, if they're not sick or anything and they have an appointment, they have something important to do or a place to be, don't slack when it comes to that because you might as well just give it, get it over with. You're going to give yourself more work to do by holding off. I know mommy's done it, Um, but Yes, it's okay to say no. It's okay to take a break sometimes. It can be so overwhelming as a special needs parent. So yes, some days say no. You need that time to refresh, replenish, rejuvenate, whatever. I'm trying to think of the word. All right, so it's okay to say no. Not all the time, just sometimes. Number eight, spend time with your child. Not just at doctor's appointments, but fun time. Do something fun. Yay! Like, go to the park. Go outside. That brings me to my next tip. Get air. Like, go outside and get fresh air. If you're in the house all the time, I was. I was I, yes. We're in the house, like, 90% of the time. It's no good. You need vitamin D. So tip number 10, keep your sense of humor. I know with the situation that you're in, being a special needs parent, it could be depressing. You don't want to think like that all the time. Lighten up your mood. Like I said, in tip number nine, go outside, get some fresh air, be around other people, you know, get yourself out of that funk. And I'm not saying that, you know, if your child hurts themselves, you want to laugh. But for instance, my son, he makes certain squawking noise like he sounds like Chewbacca and sometimes I'm just like oh my gosh Noah like you are driving me crazy but then I have to remember like it's him it's what's making him happy as long as he's happy I'm happy and I shouldn't give him a hard time just because he's making sounds but keep your sense of humor that's what keeps you young and keeps you going and number 11 yes we are almost done Woo! number 11 Praise your child. You must cheer them on and praise them. They deserve it. They don't get that every day. There's a lot of people out there who see them differently and they see their challenges as burdens. You don't want to be that parent. You don't want to be that advocate. So yeah, thank you for watching my video. I had to cut it short. And if you want to follow our journey, I'll be making more videos like this. Feel free to subscribe and thank you again. I hope you guys have a great day. And you're going to say bye-bye, Noah. Bye-bye. He could not wait for this video to be over. He's been so good, right? You've been so good. Usually he makes so much noise. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do.